Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me be the first to welcome you to ESCA Invite Season 26 on Team Fortress TV. My name is Corn Pop, and joined tonight by my good friends Marxist and Nysel. And for the opening match, we have two really exciting teams. It's Faint Gaming versus Fifth NA. Faint should be a familiar name to anyone who watched our season's coverage last season, Season 25. And Swift is a kind of new org. They formed a team for I-61, and now they're playing in both ESCA Season 26 and ETF2L Season 28. Marxist org names are all interesting, but I really want to know about the players. Let's go over some rosters. All right, your roster rundown here for the first week. Anyways, we've got Spiff, the newcomer sponsor. We've got 404 on Med, Delpo on Demo, Garbuglio, aka Purple Shirt. It's probably going to be a Roamer. High Five is on the sol other Soldier class, probably Pocket. Slemnish is going to be your first scout, and then making his NA invite debut you have tiger who's actually a european player yeah always interesting it's been it's been a long time i think season 14 it was in the it was in the news article i think season 14 was the last time we had an international player play in esca so it's kind of cool that we have uh, another one of those coming in somebody outside of the us and canada i got to use a different flag for the match page oh marxist it was amazing Fake Gaming, though, they're going to have May on Medic. Campy's going to be their demo win. Tambo and Laz are their soldiers. And Yite and Sandblast are their scouts. And if you're paying attention, that's three new players on the side of Faint Gaming. They picked up two new soldiers and a new scout in the forms of Tambo, Laz, and Yite. Um, what do you think about that kind of roster switch up, Marxist? Obviously, I mean, Yite's a really good player. He got third last season on No Mercy. Tambo and Laz maybe a little less star studded, but they didn't really replace star studded players either. Um, you think it's gonna hurt them, help them? Yeah, we'll see. Laz has drawn some criticism before. Tambo has kind of been around the block a little bit at least. So we'll see. It mainly comes down to how they're gonna play together, and I haven't been able to catch them play yet since uh, we don't see a ton of scrims anymore. <laughs> But uh, we'll see. We'll we'll be able to tell pretty quick how things are going for them over there, and uh, if they're having any kind of major problems or meltdowns. You'll see new soldiers on a team. Usually, what you're going to wind up seeing is you'll you'll either see a pocket or a healed soldier, as the case may be. Go in, say two three seconds too early, die without accomplishing much, and then a lot of pushes will be blunted. If we see that, it's, you know, the soldiers just haven't, they don't jive yet. But hopefully that's not the case and we get a good uh, good match here on Sunshine. Yeah, and it seems there's 11 players in the server. I think our European friend might be having some issues getting in. That's just speculation, I have no idea. But uh, he's the last player to get into the server. And what do you think about that playing uh, with fairly high ping? He's on the scout role, Tiger. He's a very, very good European scout. Uh, he won last season of ETF-12. He got player of the season. If you watch that grand finals of uh, ETF-12 season 27, he kind of carried their team. I mean, not really, but easily their best player. Um, coming over to NA, playing with probably around, I don't know, 120 ping maybe. Uh, how's that going to affect him, and do you think he's going to be as good as he is in Europe? Uh, well, for a scout player, 120 isn't so bad. It mm -hmm. may impact your ability to dodge certain kinds of damage somewhat, but it's not really, it's not the end of the world. If you were a demo or a soldier, 120 is a major problem because it'll delay the output of your projectiles, but... Since Scout doesn't have to worry about that, it's not as big of a deal. It's just that when you when you see rockets and so forth, they they're not actually where they appear in some scenarios. I assume his connection is rather stable as well, so I, I don't think he'll have any problems. Uh, it may be an, an adjustment at first, but we saw players like Power have absolutely dominant performances, even with relatively high ping i'd suspect power probably played with more ping than uh, tiger is going to tonight yeah hopefully it won't affect him too too much um talking more about the scouts though uh there is an interesting kind of matchup in this game i do want to mention slumnish and uh yite 
two scouts on the opposing teams obviously played together last season under the team no mercy as a scout pairing and they were really good honestly like that's a scout pairing that could have compared with the top two teams for io in a sense um they did get third obviously but now they're split apart and now they're playing on these two separate teams with separate partners uh, you watched that last season. Who would you give the edge to? Because in my opinion, I'd probably say Slemnish is a little bit better, but I mean, they're so close in skill. Yeah, well, it depends on Slemnish, the human being. Slemnish yeah. turned in a lot of really dominant performances over previous seasons and then kind of tapered off last season. So if he's still kind of on the mend, then uh, we'll see. But if Slumnish can ever recapture the magic that he had, you know, over the previous four seasons, then I think it's no question Slumnish. Yeah, I think one of the uh, interesting things you can actually do, usually the stat, there's a stats page on ESCA, half the people don't even know that, but usually it's pretty useless just because it's kind of all just general stats, like, well, this person had more frags than this person, yeah, but they also had, you know, two hours more playtime, but uh, when it's two scouts on the same team, it can actually be kind of neat to go and look at that whole season-wide uh, stats, like who did have the most overall frags, overall damage per minute, and Slumnish was winning in most of those categories, um, I think there was maybe one, like, maybe damage per minute in the postseason, and yeah, it was a little bit higher or something, but regardless, they were close on almost all measures, so I don't think it's that's going to be a huge uh, determiner in this one. I think they're both going to be um, playing well, unless, of course, one's having a bad day or whatever. Scout can be kind of a wish-washy class like that, but yeah, I think uh, hopefully we'll be in for a good game. Looks like he's having some issues to join the server. Tiger, he just got an error. You must register at ESCA.net to play on the server. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's problematic. Well, here, I can solve the mystery right now. Is Tiger paid up? These are important things to discover, because if he's not, <laughs> we uh, we may not have a game tonight. I don't oh, even yeah. Know. Is he? I'm getting there. It, okay. it was harder than I thought to uh, get. Yeah, it says he is paid. All right. So it's just some kind of wackadoo stuff with uh, ESEA. No e-check shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, I haven't read anything in the chat about it. So the players aren't talking uh, with each other other than just spewing memes. So you're not really missing anything if you can't see the chat. Um, but... Hopefully we'll get started soon. We're only we're only twenty minutes past the start date, so this is probably or start time. This is pretty typical for invite. Well, it's first match of the season, so yeah. some t you're gonna expect this first week. Somebody sometime is gonna have trouble with the client. That's just the nature of computers. Yeah, computers can be iffy like that, especially ESCA. I mean, there's a lot of. It's a lot of extra stuff you gotta go through to make sure ESCA knows you're not cheating. Which has its ups and downs, I mean, on the upside, uh, it's pretty good at preventing cheaters. On the downside, we have to wait half an hour for each game, and half the time the STVs don't work, and... Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of a mess. But, but... Well, and that's a new problem, that didn't used to be the case. STVs? Yeah. Yeah, relatively new, I suppose. It's been a few seasons, though. The back in my day, the only <laughs> problem we had was when they would forget to set the config at LAN and end the match two minutes early. Ooh. But uh and really that only sapped the hype at the end of a match if it was tight and then then the server just closed. <laughs> uh but most of the time it didn't really affect us all that badly. But yeah, this Hopefully they can figure out the anomaly with STVs here. And also the anomaly with Tiger's uh, client. Yeah, well, so far this season, we have a 100% success rate with STVs. Just putting that out there. Maybe it's fixed this season. Massive improvement. <laughs> but I do still recall Seabear's opening season cast that had like a 2 hour and 45 minute pregame. Oh boy. So, yeah. I will never, I can guarantee you, I will never match that feat. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm pretty sure uh, we would probably give up before that happened. Two hour and 45 minute, you say? Yeah. 
That is that is a long time to wait for a match of TF2. And the match didn't even happen. Wow. Yeah, it was the ultimate and wah wah. Well, but, uh, such is life. So we're still, uh, in case you can't see the chat, Tiger tried to join again, and uh, it kicked him for the same reason again. So uh, hopefully they've gone with the submit a ticket option. I wonder if they have any subs paid up. They don't. They have subs on their roster, but no, they only have six on their roster paid up, including Tiger, so... I can't really get it. I know, can you pay somebody up, like, and immediately have them in the game, or isn't there, like, a wait period? Uh, it, I mean, it honestly depends. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can pay, and it'll happen within five minutes, and other yep. times it'll, it could be longer. It's just, it all depends on when the banks get to processing your money, and da da da, and that, it can be pretty variable. But it's yeah. not that bad. It won't be, like, there's not a 24-hour hold or anything. Okay. That's good. There's the, the fifth is threatening that uh, if they don't get six, they're gonna forfeit. Uh, forfeit win them. So it's the wrong team. Obviously, they only they only have five, so they can't they can't do that. But you know, the threats there. I guess. Well, they can dot start the match. They can play five v six if they really wanted to. It'd well, be kind of so bad, but the norm here. So what you do? This is edu etiquette, education for any newer players out there. What you do in these kinds of situations is, as long as there's no pressing obligations el elsewhere, what you'll do is go ahead and dot start this match when it gets close to eleven thirty Eastern, which is in like six or seven minutes, and then you'll immediately pause. And then you'll give it, like, another 10 minutes. Because if you wait longer than 30 minutes, the server will reset, and then you're in a bad situation <laughs> where you have to depend on admins to reset everything, and that's going to be another half-hour delay. Yeah, as, as much as we love Try, it can be... Uh, we'd rather not have to rely on him to get our game to work. He has his ESEA account linked to the wrong Steam account. Well then. <laughs> that could be an issue, I guess. I mean, as long as he has access to the Steam account. Although I guess the Steam account doesn't have, like, unlocks. But he's a scout player, what does he need? Boston Basher? Shush. Yeah. The winger. Yeah, I suppose. You, you can play without the winger, though. It's not mandatory. Oh yeah, but what if that's the secret? Is that why he's the best player in Europe? Because he uses the winger? Yeah, maybe that's all it takes. Well, there is kind of that factor. I mean, Europeans, they use quite a few more unlocks than we do. Or at least, well, maybe not quite a few, but certainly there's a lot more uh, prevalence of certain unlocks, like the banners and stuff in Europe that we see in NA. I went to England to cast I-61 just this past few weeks, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird seeing so many strange tactics that we don't see in North America, so maybe Tiger can uh, introduce some of these gimmick plays into the North American scene, and we can evolve like the Europeans do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. I did occasionally like to run Buff Banner, just because it was pretty funny, Yeah, but uh, I know that the banner that's the most popular is the Conch, because oh. it gives you the speed and the healing. I saw all three used at land. I'm telling you, they're all they're Ooh. all out. Yeah, it's like generally you see at least one per game. I don't know if I've ever seen a banner played in in invites. I don't think I have. I have. Yeah. How long ago was that? A while. Yeah. Uh, and it was a conch. Mm -hmm. They uh, they forsook their buff banner plays. Doesn't conch build faster as well? I believe I mean... it does. The what I like to use a buff banner for was you would just put it on your roamer who would then derp around and spam for a while and then he'd finally get it of course. Mm -hmm. And then you would just suicide in a scout and have him come back heavy and then buff banner the heavy <laughs> and then that usually solved whatever problem you may be having. Oh, Marxist, look at that! Look who just joined the server. It looks as if he's figured out. How to properly enter his own Steam ID. <laughs> there we go. I'm waiting for the home team to pick their side. 
Corn Pop, do you know what this means? I think that means we're starting. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready because we're about to go live into the first match of ESCA Invite Season 26, Swift NA. I think it's just pronounced Swift NA, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep pronouncing it wrong because it's a European name. Taking on Faint Gaming on Sunshine. This is our week one map. I didn't get to talk about the map too much, Marxist, but I know it's a fan favorite, so always a good time on Sunshine as we're rolling out to the first mid fight of ESCA Invite Season 26. Your demo men are gonna be Delpo and Campy getting here uh can't be a little bit slower than delpo this time looks like laz gonna be getting some high ground as well just exchanging some spam early it's a very big mid here on sunshine so you gotta wait just for a minute before some action starts going down high five getting a little disconnected from his team but not for too long he's reconnecting now they're doing kind of this ring around the rosy mid laz jumps up and whoa way up in the air dog is doing a super high bomb and he dies nice shot by laz to take him out early so it's a four well now there's a lot of fights going down 4v5 big bomb in by laz going over for four four but can't hit those rockets and he's very low now Delpo should be able to get that meanwhile back on mid high five is still fighting but he is going to end up going down to campy and it looks like the player in the back lines got shot down as well laz so Swift are going to give up this middle point unless they want to re-aggress here, Marcus, they lose the mid cap. Yeah, and this is a strange re-aggression because they're, they're just going to, it looks like they want to just kind of go to second, but they're going to get forced. I don't really know what the whole big idea was behind that, but now we have an Uber exchange on mid, and Campy is going to be the first victim. Faint already ending up some down. They've got players trapped behind. Sandblast gets blown away by Garbuglio. That puts him two down and sands the demo. Tambo looks like he's kind of hanging out here. He might get taken out. Yeah, there he is. And the rest of his... I mean, he kind of had to die there because the rest of his team was so slow in getting out. They probably would have lost the whole farm there. It looks like there is a sack coming in, though, Corn Pop. Yeah, they're sending a lot of players in the second point, and they're gonna end up taking it off of Faint Gaming. They're gonna have to back off, and Campy going down's a really big pick, because that's no demo man for your last point. Yeah, he might even die as well. He's gonna get back to his medic, so he's okay, but without a demo man, this could be a very fast push in if they wanna go with it. Uh, 90% from 404. Campy's up in five seconds, so I don't think they'll push with the demo man down, but still, this is gonna be. Well, they might not even push right now, Marcus. I think we'll probably just wait for, uh, for a sack or something. Sandblast is up on Spy, though, just checking off classes. Yeah, uh, Sandblast is really diligent about that. That's one of the things I do like about Sandblast's playstyle is he's probably the most obsessive player in Invite in regards to that. But uh, yeah, real tragic series of affairs there for Faint where they they won mid and then just started kind of running around it from that point on. It's like they they didn't expect to win. Oh, air shots Ooh. traded out. Garbuglio gets a little scared there but ends up dying. And uh, we'll see if any counters come out. The time is passing. Well, it was so fast, Laz went in just immediately. Like, it was a really good reaction to that first soldier bomb. He didn't get anything, but I like how fast he was being with that counter sack. Yeah, you need to do it as fast as you can. That's why I usually would, uh, would advise to go with the pocket at doing them, because usually the pocket's just standing there with 300 health. So... It's easy for them to just snap and do it, unless they're the one that gets shot by the Suicider. But we do have Sandblast again, checking for off classes. He likely found out the Slumnish has gone Sniper. Yeah, Slumnish is up on that class. Laz is going Engineer as well, he respawned on that. But the Sniper is the one you really want to care about. Slumnish on the left-hand side. His team is spamming on the right. They don't know there's a Sniper yet, unless Sandblast caught it with that Spy. Looking over, he's gonna get a shot at the combo. Is he gonna be able to hit it? He's going in pretty deep here, but he's not gonna take that shot backing off. They definitely know there's a sniper now, even if they didn't check it with a spy. Yeah, it was kind of strange. Like, he got in super deep and then uh, just backed out of his his scope. He had a scout to shoot, but didn't didn't even bother taking the shot. So now he, here he is under. He has a scout again. He does take the shot that time. And uh, we'll see. It should put them in motion. Especially with Sandblast going down, losing the 1v1 against Tiger. That's going to help out the team a lot. And they're already spamming the sentry gun down as well. Is Laz going to be able to heal that up? Looks like he's not. Slumnish does get taken down. Um, but there goes the gun. Yite as well dies to Garbuglio. He went in and got that sniper frag. So good to uh, neutralize that throughout. But here comes the Uber Charges on the right hand side. They're going in with Tiger. They forced uh, the enemy team's Uber Charge. But now they have to back off. The sentry gun was too much, juggling them up into the air. And with that, I don't think they're going to do anything unless they want to try to win this post-super fight. But they're just sitting on the second. It looks like it's going to be a reset. 
Yeah, that was the right decision. Sandblast kind of went in for a flank play there, so if he didn't see them, they'd already backed all the way out. So if Spiff had tried to hold on to that a little bit longer or try to rotate play, they'd have got shot in the back. So pretty solid play there. Faint having a little bit of trouble on this last. I didn't like that play where he ended up uh, trading out for the sniper and losing your sentry gun on one, one go. But uh, we're going to try the Slimnish Sniper again, but now he has to contest the Yite Defensive Sniper. We talked a bit about who was the better uh, scout on No Mercy. Now we're questioning who's the better sniper as they're both going up against each other. Uh, looks like Yite's going to switch off to scout now as they did get that one pick onto Tiger. Tiger a little too aggressive. Sandblast, the enemy team combo. Uh, and he actually gets Garbuglia, which isn't too bad. Garbuglia ends up killing himself on that rocket. So a nice trade from Sandblast there, but I still don't know if it's going to be enough for him to push out onto the second point. Tiger's going to be re-aggressing. It is going to be up for Sandblast to, or to, uh, Tambo to come in, but he got completely annihilated. Great shot by High Five to take him down. And it's one of those situations where it's a shame on Tambo for shooting that med at the feet. Yeah. You, you're gonna die anyways, so why pop him up in the air? Just hit him, either hit him in the head or miss, so that when he tries to surf you, it bounces him like two feet away. Yeah, Slumnish was going for a hero shot, didn't get it, backed off, died anyways there as Tambo was able to get the spam kill. So, Yite's going to be running in through under, and I think he's going to commit. Oh, he got spotted out immediately and has to run away. He's not going to die, but nice rocket from Garbuglio to deny that scout that was going to go in for the kill. Yep, we'll see here, because Slumnish now on the spy class, so going into that well of off classes right here to try to break this. Uh, he's actually Dead Ringer as well, which is pretty unusual. Yeah, and this is the one time Sandblast isn't going back to spawn to check the off classes, but he hits a shot onto Delpo, so maybe that was a good, uh, good choice by him. Without a demo man, they could potentially try to push out. Of course, there's that spy on the field, so the gutter will go for the back cap, but he's on that Dead Ringer, and he has popped it off now. He's decloaked down below. Uh, the Uber Charge was popped off by the red team. They kind of came out. Off of their last point, but there's a couple players in behind. They really got to look out for that. The back cap threat is very real. High five is back there. Tambo's going to end up going down to Garbuglio, and now they're just doing the sandwich play instead. Here comes the pop out of 404. They're going to get that frag onto May the Medic. That's a really big one, and this might be the round going in favor of Swift NA as they're coming in. Now Yite is taking quite a bit of damage. Garbuglio on top of him, but now Fane have a chance to recollapse. They got to take down Tiger on the point. Tiger jumps off at a nice pipe from Campy. Is going to be able to shut him down, but Campy goes down anyways. Looks like there's a lot of players dying. It's only Tambo and Sandblast. Sandblast is very low. I hear Ambassador shots running out anywhere, everywhere. But, but miraculously, it looks like Faint are going to hold on unless there's one more soldier. High five wants to jump on it. Sandblast needs to take him down. He's on very little HP, but made the last player alive. He is going to be able to stand on this point, and there is going to be no capture going off, Marks. This was a lot of frags. Yeah, that was a big exchange, and they managed to hold out here. Does Faint. Now, because they've never retaken second, they were actually down to three minutes and 50 seconds here. Oh. Which uh, could time the round out, which honestly, if I were faint, I would be totally okay with that because we won mid last time. Now, there is a counter spy here in Sandblast who has come all the way out. Kind of unusual to see this here, but he is in position. But it doesn't even matter. It looks like Switch is just going to push in, and they've got a lot of time on point. Tiger, nobody's taking him off of it, and he's just going to stand on it. They all went into spawn, and with that, with a spy behind, Fank Gaming go down 1-0 to Swift NA. Yeah, that was a, a bit of a blown call there. Didn't expect the Uber to come out that early, I don't think, and yeah. they got a little scared. But here we go. Can Swift recover on mid after a pretty convincing first round? Yeah, they managed to stall. It was quite a long round, almost 10 minutes, so... 21 minutes left on the clock, and again, we're going to be waiting for the first frag to go down. Laz is getting pretty aggressive in the enemy team's flank. Sandblast is going to be the first one getting frag onto the European player, though. Tiger does go down, and now Swift are in a bit of a sticky spot because they're all clumped up. They don't have a ton of health. High Five is backing off, but he's going to meet Laz over in Cafe. Meanwhile, everybody's aggressing on the combo. It looks like their medic's going to die. Delpo as well falls, but they got the medic in kind, and Campy's being juggled around all over the place. Garbulo is trying to get that frag out of him. Campy, nice surf, but now they're out with the melee weapons, and Slumish picks up the frag from across the map. Sandblast takes him down in kind, though, and now it's just Laz and Sandblast chasing down Garbuglio, he's not going to live, and with everybody dead on Swift, it's going to be a faint mid. Yeah, and this is a very similar situation to last time, where we've got a player already from Swift, this Tiger on the point, 
going to get the frag, but doesn't have a poodle to help. But it's a soldier oh. who is, of course, using gumboats. So, oh, yike comes in just in the nick of time. This mid fight might not be over though. If they can get some spam, they're managing to keep the players off of this. But I think they have enough ground now. Faint gaming are gonna cap that off. So finally, the mid cap, the midpoint does get capped off. And with faints on the uh, front foot, they are able to look into pushing second. Both medics died at about the same time. So even Uber charges right now. No off classes on the field or any shenanigans like that. Looks like Faint Game is coming in through the flank. They're wrapping around now, trying to get some damage down. They're not willing to just sit back and let this happen. It looks like Slumnish and Tiger are both going to go down, so no scouts on the side of Swift, and they're all trying to run away. Garbuglio goes down as well. They don't even really have an advantage, Marxist, but they're just plowing over these players, and 4-4 gets extremely low. He drops his player. He's at 100%, but man, oh man, they have lost almost all of their players. There's only two up now, and Faint Gaming are running this last point. 4-4 hasn't popped to save anybody. He pops to block the point, and that's going to allow his scouts to get out here, but Jungle, they're right Sticky's marks this is gonna end up getting off it. Yeah, Campy had a huge round. That's the play of the game so far. A single, single pipe type object from Campy killed two players, and they just kept it rolling and even got a, a nice little juggle pop-up air shot. Campy looking to go huge one more time. He's been, well, he did go really big in that round. They need him to go big again, but he's taken a lot of damage extremely early in this mid fight. They know they have to focus on Tambo now, We're gonna be eating a lot of that spam, and Slemnish gets the frag on him as he falls to his death guard. Boogaloo getting really aggressive on a Sandblast, does get that frag as well. Bank Gaming have all backed off, they don't have a ton of health. Yike goes down to Tiger, and they still haven't gotten any frags in this mid fight, and Campy's in a lot of danger, extremely low. Laz as well, looks like, no, are they both gonna get out? Laz isn't gonna get out. The Dome Man is disconnected from his medic. Campy, he needs an arrow, but he's not gonna get it. Garbuglio kills him, and they've killed everybody except for the medic, and they're already on last marks. Yeah, I like this play. You try to pressure them out so that you don't end up in a stalemate situation. But uh, May, too smart for that, is going to be pulled back into spawn. Can't really be touched, and it's not worth it to try to camp there. But here comes the big bomb. Not gonna pan out for Garbuglio. The spam comes in. Gets a little dicey there for Sandblast, but he'll survive. Yeah, this is what Faint Gaming need. They really wanted this to slow down, and now it's going to as there's even players in just a second and 100% on both teams. And they have a sniper already, so they don't need to worry about any of that. Sandblast is going to be peeking here on the upper left side. He'd like to get something. He hit a body shot on a high five, I think, but that's not going to be enough to kill, even with that Machina. So... At least they have gained their footing once again. That was a devastating mid for them, and for them to be able to slow it down, that's really good. Garbuglio is up on Spy. Oh, here we go. Let's see what Garbuglio's got. Sandblast is on that sniper, and uh, Garbuglio is in position. Oh, they know. They expected. <laughs> so, there they go. Not a successful Spy play. We'll see if the counter set comes out. I don't think it will. They're pretty far away. But I don't know. Sandblast going for the <laughs> shot of his life. I guess I'm not opposed yeah. to that. It was fun. Uh, good on May to be really spy conscious there. I don't think they had any reason to believe there'd be a spy, but still May was turning around every three seconds and he saw that spy from a mile away. So now it looks like they want to send somebody in, but they're getting kind of stuffed in this upper right corner. Swift are having a bad time trying to get into this one. They don't have any off classes at the moment. Sandblast is checking. Uh, and he shouldn't see anything as there's nothing on the field. No, he's come back up on scout, it looks like. So we got standard 6v6 lineup, and Garbuglio is underneath. Is he going to try to jump? He's eating a lot of spam. He is going to try to jump anyways, though. Ooh, a big air shot, too, I think. As, uh, well, no, not too. Still, though, a really big air shot. Yite ends up eating the frag, and Tiger at the exact same time does go down to the demo and campy. I mean, if he's got to die, at least they're on the same spawn timer here, but they are going to push out here. They're gonna try to bait this with the respawn timer. Actually, Tambo almost goes down, get, but does not get dropped. Yite does end up dying as well. And this is ending up being a better exchange for Spiff. But can they catch any more players? They kind of wussed out there on that door. There were a lot of hurt players for them to go after, and I guess they got scared. But uh, here we are. Nice play from Spiff there to play the respawn game. If that other team takes too long to get out on your second, you can uh, you can just hide back there and wait with your Uber. And the play is the Slumnish Sniper as he's coming up to try to push in, get their second round on the board against Faint Gaming. Every time they try to push in, it seems to take them quite a few tries, but they did get it that first time and uh, 
You know, what I'm noticing is when Fake Gaming gets around, it's very, very fast. And when Swift gets around, it's a grind. Sandblast is up on Spy, though. Yeah, and he is, again, right behind the med here. Oh, he bumped a player. Mm. And he bumps the med, too. <laughs> But uh, he's he's L dead, and he'll be so for 16 seconds. And Slumnish trying to get some shots down does hit a little bit. They are going to throw in Tiger. He gets blown away by Tambo. And uh, we'll see what they decide to do now. Another sack play in. Lots of players bouncing around. We are going to see another trade out. And that's going to put Swift 2 down to only having lost Yite over on Faint. So... Maybe they'll feel a little froggy here, Corn Pop. Yeah, I thought that was a decent sack in by High Five. He got the one for one trade, and his team was looking to make some space, but they didn't find anything, and they didn't just uh, go just because. So this is fine. They're gonna sit back and uh, try it again. They've got a sniper peeking left. Slemnish is looking for the shot. He's gonna be finding something soon. Yites up on that beam. He's got Tiger to protect him, but I think he's backed off actually. Going lower now. Yeah, and Slumnish not being healed, sees the soldier, misses the shot. Sandblast is going to die uh, in a trap or to stickies of some sort. I he wasn't was paying attention again. to him. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll see what's going on now because we've got a sniper lower and nobody's really doing a ton about it. There they go. The pressure has arrived. We're going to send in a scout here. Whoa, Slumnish is going to get the kill as well. Laz and Yai both down. You're never going to get a better chance than that. Unfortunately, Tiger is kind of left to hang by his team. But uh, the damage is pretty huge here for Spiff. Oh, and Slemnish gets another frag. That should pretty well wrap it up. Oh, my God. And another frag on top of that. That's what you want to see. Soldiers, everybody's diving the point. They're still alive. SMG from Slemnish. <laughs> and they'll be chased off there. And Spiff is going to take a second round there. My rule of thumb on those corn pop is if your sniper can actually manage to get a frag during the sort of post uber fight, then mm -hmm. chances are you're gonna win. Yeah, that's a good rule, I think. If I had any advice for Faint, it'd be stop getting shot in the head, because that seemed to be a big problem in that last uh, last defense. Can't be getting here quite a bit faster than Delpo, a lot more hurt as well, though, so uh, trading speed for health. Now we see pretty aggressive from Faint Gaming. They have control of this clock tower. They're going to send both their soldiers at the exact same time, get 4 4 they're going to lose Lazbart, and Tambo's being chased into the flank as well, so he's going to go down. They got another soldier in, and Yite's in actually on a lot of players, almost got high five as well after getting Slumnish. Now if this team can focus up on high five, finally Sam Blast used a pistol shot. Delpo from behind though is gonna hit a nice pipe. And he's looking for May as well, but ends up getting taken down by the pistol of Sam Blast. He got campy, but uh, still not gonna be enough for his team to win the fight. Yeah, I like that mid from Faint. A, a traditional a double soldier aggression mid on Sunshine is really hard. If you've, if you've watched our cats, you'll know I say that a lot. Mm -hmm. But this one had, it was a double soldier aggression mid, but it had a tiny delay to let the rest of the team catch up. And actually, right now, the fear of Sandblast prevents them from coming out here and blocking the second. So they're going to end up completely on their own last off of that but i really like that mid strat there from faint gaming and garbulo gets that uber force really early and they did lose their demo man to a sniper so it's not a great full pop in but they still can work with this they are getting out now may take a little bit too much damage the soldiers all the way up in the air slemish and yai both gonna end up going down slemish was on that heavy class tiger jumping around gonna try to find the frag on a tambo he is gonna get it now it's only a scout and a medic running all the way back that was an unsuccessful push in the last by faint gaming as i said when they get around it's fast but it just didn't work out for them this time yeah they losing their demo who's a major damage dealer on their team is not a good sign but here we go they should be able to at least do something at mid as we see a alley push coming in here or a cauliflower push some bombing going on there was a player in forward spawn but th they're all only looking to kill time here laz is going to go down the uber is going to be popped off from four four though so yep. they're coming out here on second and this is this could not be better except for they're going to lose campy again unfortunately yai unable to save him but there's a fight going on in the back as the uber from may pushes out to take mid and now there's just tambo running a train on them and the little cafe area so easy peasy it looks like they fell right into their clever trap 
It was a really good early force by Laz, and then Yite managed to win like a 1v2 in the back lines, uh, killing two more players, and they just got the frags after that. So now they have a huge uber advantage. They're going to be looking to push Lascar. Bugli was up on heavy. They got to look out for that, but otherwise, it should be a fairly simple mid. Why does Sandblast run in like that, though, Marks? This double hits him with a pipe, and I don't uh, understand the reasoning. I'll tell you, it's because he hates winning. <laughs> but uh, so here we go. Uh, they should be able to just Uber in right now, but instead they had a scout choose to, uh, to die. So now the play is gonna- Oh, man, oh. it goes down to Tiger! They fiddled around there, Corn Pop. I hope our ca our cameraman in Nysol caught that. Because if you're gonna do that play, you need to just run through there, because your vision from lower is not great. <laughs> Yeah, this the sniper plays have just been working so well for Swift. Now they're gonna come down. They're gonna get the force pretty early from 404, and 404 really has nobody with them except for Slumnish. Bane are losing all of these fights, so they're gonna get Tiger, but it doesn't matter. They've lost three players already, and the uh, only players alive are backed off to mid already. So didn't look like a great force to begin with, but uh, it didn't matter because they ended up getting that second point. And Sa I did enjoy Sandblast was hiding in a back cap spot, but uh, ended up getting shut down by Campy there. Now Swift, uh, who's, Swift. Who's on his team, mind you? That's the important <laughs> fact. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Swift get that middle point now, and it looks like they're gonna... Well, they probably can't keep the pressure too hard as they're sitting there. It is even Uber charges, more or less. Maybe slight add for faint even, but they're still on the second. They're not looking to push into mid anytime soon, so they need to get around to the board marks as there's only eight and a half minutes remaining. Still plenty of time to get some points, but it's a 2-1 scoreline. Nobody's hit three yet. Yeah, and we got to be getting pretty tight on the time overall in this first half as well. The Ubers are even, and we'll see Swift very much content to grind it out. And that's fine. That's a, that's a viable way to play the game, but we'll see. You don't want, if you're holding mid, you have the respawn advantage. You don't want to give that away. So we'll see what they're going to do here. They're pushing through the cafe or whatever restaurant you prefer. I like to call it Panera Bread sometimes. As the sack comes in, Garbuglio goes down. No damage, really. Yeah, not the greatest bomb anyone's ever seen. Laz's gonna try to duplicate that, and he actually gets a lot of damage on the 404, but Tiger shuts him down, so... I got a little excited there because he hit a, a kind of crisp rocket right in the midst of some players, but unfortunately, bombing that many players, somebody's bound to shoot you. <laughs> Especially an invite. Yes. One would hope. But we'll see, because so far we've just seen the tag bomb into, you know, reverse pick. Mm -hmm. And so far, nothing really doing it. Looks like they're going to maybe send Tiger in here. No, Garbuglio again with the side bomb here. Gets on the demo, oh. nice shot, onto Campy. That's, that's all you need. Yeah, Tambo goes down. The pop comes out of 404. I think Laz is able to force that one off. A nice pipe from Del Delpo, though, is going to take him down. He was on that retreat. May hasn't popped Uber Charge off. He's got two scouts alive with him, and they didn't think they could actually take a good trade. So they're going to hold on to it. Now they're going to have Uber Advantage sitting on their last point. That's kind of a difficult difficult spot to work with, Marxists, because you risk that back cap. But hopefully they'll be able to get on that second point once again. Well, and also time may be a factor. It's True. you... You, if there's only like four minutes left, it's maybe not worth it to push out with your Uber advantage because it's going to be a pretty tall order, but it, they don't care. They're coming out, Cornbach. Yeah, Garbulu is going behind, but we won't worry about him too long. They got 4 4 extremely early, and the Garbulu in the back line. Tiger goes down as well to a nice pistol from Tambo. So, with three quick frags, that's going to be a really good and effective pop by them, especially getting that medic. They're going to continue to have this Uber Charge advantage. There's six and a half minutes left on the overall clock marks, so they have plenty of time to get back to the enemy team's last. Maybe even get a third round on the board if they want to keep up this momentum. They're getting this middle point off the board right now, and they still have, it looks like, 30% advantage. That's very workable. Yep. And. Swift was unable to mount any kind of a defense at mid, so ideally, in a world where everything goes right for faint, they should have to expend this uber on second, and then we're pretty much at the reverse of where we just were, because Swift will have uber advantage on last. But uh, we'll see. If they fiddly part around here, it might not work out. All right. They're going in now, the Uber is deployed, and there is nothing really doing there. I may chase down a high five here. Laz is getting beat up. 
Yeah, do you ever just like think they just it seems like they thought we are going to pop in the, the uber charge and we're gonna kill a lot of players and the first part happened pretty well they did right click but there was no players there to kill so looks like they're just gonna lose that uber charge advantage and now uh, as you said we're exactly on the back foot it's gonna be swift who have that uber charge advantage looking to push at a last yeah and we'll see what they decide to do here it looks like they're content to do nothing uh I don't mm. imagine... Well, no, they're kind of peeking out now. Maybe they're having a discussion about how much time is left. Because this is the kind of thing that does not come up in preseason scrims. Yeah. That's what you get when you put a European on your team, Mark. So they just they just want to wait out the clock. Always. Five minutes left in this uh, round. So still plenty of time. I mean, they are going to give that Uber charge up. They have a sniper and he just took a shot, but he's being aggressed on really uh, harshly here. Laz doesn't get the frag, though, which is pretty surprising. Um, Garbuli gonna be going in for that counter sack though, unless he just wants to back off. Seems like he isn't gonna commit to that, so not gonna happen there. Uh, but thank gaming, I mean, they just have chance after chance. If uh, Swift aren't moving, then they're gonna get it eventually. Yeah, the the big kind of break there was Garbuglio's flank play. May was super duper low, and if he'd been a little bit faster on the trigger there to go in for that sack, he probably would have got a, uh, an uber drop. But uh, it was not to be. They're gonna Euro uber this. Here we go, very rare, never before mm. seen clips. Here they go, running away. Oh, wow, they chase. High five goes in, he gets both. Excellent work from high five. There is a scout on last, but it's not gonna turn out. Yite and Sandblast do combine to get two frags, but Faint is three players down instead. Fighting in lower, Yite is gonna go down. And we'll see if they can make it out here to second, because they do retain most of their players who are pretty good at this sort of thing. Man, Yite's a good player, but he's not a 1v3 against heals type of player, so he's not gonna be able to save that for his team. The bright side, it's even Uber charges, and I don't really see Swift moving off of their second point. There's still three minutes to go in this round, so time is getting tight. They'd like to at least tie it before it goes to halftime. It's been a long half so far. They're going to be, well, I mean, maybe not getting too tired, but uh, the stress has got to be getting to them. They know this is a close game, and being the first match of the season, it's going to be an important one, too, to set the scene. Yeah, you really want to win your first game of the season. That was generally... I generally felt way better if we managed that. Now Tiger goes down to the Yite Sniper. The sniper is getting a kill in transition. That puts him in a bad situation, but then Campy goes down. And then High Five is going to trade out as well. 4 4 is going to go down to Laz. The Uber has popped off. And it's actually going to be a complete reversal here. We'll see, though. Slumnish going to try and be as annoying as possible and run around behind. May try to spawn camp people. Double soldier bomb coming in. They're going to get Delpo. And now they're on the point. The scout is going to try to fight them in Tiger <laughs> momentarily, but he's going to get shut down. Unfortunately, the lack of shotguns on Faint, that really doesn't hurt them so much when the scout can only come at them through a tiny door. Yeah, I guess that's the upside of running gunboats, uh, at least, well, that and the jumping around, I guess. Slumnish finally comes in from behind. He is going to end up going down, so no scouts alive. Just as I say that, Tiger's going to respawn on that sniper class, and they're already pushing this last point. Two minutes on that clock, so we're not super pressed for time. They get the, demo, or the heavy down extremely early. That's good for them. They need to focus this point. They're going to get a couple more frags. High five goes down, but now they're losing some. Tambo and Laz both going to go down. They have three alive versus two. Some respawns are coming in. They pop the recharge off finally, but it's only Campy and May. They got to get so many. They take the recharge off finally. They put it back on. Now try to get these frags against the enemy team's players, but it's two scouts and a soldier versus a demo man Marxist, and that's not going to be enough for them. They almost got it when they turned that Uber charge off, but uh, it wasn't quite enough. Yeah, Nick makes the great escape there. I was kind of disappointed that May didn't go for the during Uber Uber saws there. Yeah. Just because there were a lot of players standing still, but it, I assume he wanted to maintain access to his enemy gun in case <laughs> things went really bad. But uh, here we are. They do still have Uber advantage because May was able to make the great escape. Uh, Vile Rights probably should have died. And uh, we'll see what they can do with full Uber. They're still in. Plenty of time. 
Less than a minute remaining as they're popping it off. Coming to this last point, it's do or die for them at this point. They're not going to get too many more chances. They get the heavy down early again. There is a sentry gun, but Engineer switches off, and that gun gets taken off the field now. Tambo's getting some time on it, but he is going to go down. Now everybody's clumped up. The blue recharge gets popped off in the end. Uh, it's a little bit later. Sandblast is just hiding behind the point. Finally, he gets spotted, and he gets taken down. Can't make the great escape. This time, it's a full white Marxist. We are going to see a 2-1 to one half at the end of this one. Yep. They, they tried, but... A little delayed there. That's one of those situations where, given this Uber situation, I may have pushed in without Uber to start trying to see what we could work out. But now we're in garbage time. Who can get sweet air shots? There was a competition earlier, I saw. Uh, Delpo and Laz. For every time Delpo air shot Laz, Delpo was to be paid $1. Uh, presently, by the tracking, Delpo has earned one dollar. <laughs> hey man, that's not too bad. All right, so here we are at the half. I will, uh, I'll take a peek see at the, the stats if I can see them. Yeah, that's what I want to be getting uh, a view on as well. Uh, I've got them up. What I'm seeing is a big 27 frags from Sandblast and a big who's got the highest damage. Uh, it's a pretty low damage game overall, but was it Sandblast again? No, it was high five. 281, not bad. Yes, indeed. And your top damager is going to be a high five. So there you go. Soldier class on Sunshine. It's maybe it's maybe almost happening, but uh, damage numbers are a little low here for DDM because we had a lot of pretty long stalemates, so your, your damage numbers are pretty much dependent on uh, spam damage. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see. Who gets all their frags stolen from them? <laughs> it appears to be that it's uh, Sandblast. But he's also top fragging, yeah. so... I don't know if they're being stolen from him as much as he's just putting in a lot of work for his team, uh, which is good to see. I think he's the team leader, I'm pretty sure. So uh, when you've got that kind of leadership, who's also playing good, um, that can always be a morale boost to them, even though they're down one at the end of this half. It's not over. It was a pretty back-and-forth game, kind of a lot of stalemating, but uh, a lot of kind of failed pushes. Swift would often try to get in while uh, Faint did a good job of keeping him out, so... I don't think their morale is going to be too bad going into the second half. They got to get their head in the game. They got to uh, play well, though, because this is a very close match we've seen so far. Yeah, Sandblast, having played with him a bit, he's one of those players that y you always like to see if you're a, a fellow player on their mm -hmm. team, where they're a scout player that talks a lot. And that can be a huge asset if they've also got DM, uh, which is... Sandblast is on that path, I would say. The I think the trouble with Sandblast right now is that at times he gets somewhat distracted and his talking a lot can lead you into a blind alley. <laughs> but uh, that that's something that with, with time and in high pressure situations he'll get way better at. So as far as things to work on over the half, I would say Swift needs to really talk about what players are doing during set piece pushes instead of just kind of winging it as they have because it's not it has not worked. If if we went based on advantage last pushes, this should be like a five two. Yeah, but they have failed so many times. And then for faint, it's just they have done some novel things in this match. And I, I would just keep trying to do that. And don't let, uh, if, if the Swift are committed to grinding you down, just play like you have been and take us to 1 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I like to see Faint get aggressive. That seemed to be when they were playing their best. Yeah, it didn't work out for them in that final round, but they got really close. They got a lot of chances. And when that time's ticking down, the pressure can kind of get to you. If you can just be playing your game and you can just be holding W and getting all the frags you need, I mean, that one mid fight they won was so dominant. And when they win a mid fight, it seems like they really know how to win it well. So I'd like to see them kind of pull up 
their socks on these mids and may maybe kind of roll it all the way back to last, get some fast rounds because that's clearly not the uh, the kind of style we've seen Swift play. Yeah, as a man who likes to wear longer socks, <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, here we go though. We're live again. So this will be the decider who will be the first undefeated team in ESEA Season 26 in Invite. That's the question as we roll out to this mid-fight. A lot faster from Faint Gaming. Swift, they seem to be very slow. Delpo especially, not even the first player here on his team. So that's going to help Faint get some aggressive uh, positioning. And you can see they're all getting aggressive on this right-hand side. But they're losing a couple in return. But they are coming up on top. Tiger's going to get one quick strike on a Yite. Now he's jumping around. The last combat class on his team in 404. Not long for this world. This is exactly what Faint needed. They need to roll this as far as they can. Yeah, and now the real tragedy is the survivors are actually Campy and Tambo. Yeah. Uh, so they've got a super long cap time going, and uh, you've got Campy here is quite is quite exposed. Uh, it, it appears that no one has cared to check. Uh, oh, see, even look, look, Campy is like, oh, I'm gonna die if I stay up here. But nobody's done. They're back at last. It's these questionable passive plays from Swift that have uh, allowed Faint Gaming to pull off this aggressive strategy. I mean, now they're at 100% Uber Charge, coming up against a 40% from 404. They're going to be looking to push in the last when they really didn't even have a firm grasp on second yet. Swift totally could have fought that, at least put up some sort of a fight. Yeah, they didn't have that Uber Charge advantage, so they probably would have lost it. But you never know. I mean, there's uh, you'd rather have two chances at not losing than one. So here they come, right-hand side, may get started a little bit, but that's not going to hurt him too bad. Still a Uber on Sandblast, now they're switching over to Campy to get that gun down fairly early. Sandblast kind of runs in, kills high five, ends up dying in the end. Now big jump in from last, he's eating a lot of damage, but Yite's there, trying to follow it up. He's shooting in on Tiger, but he does end up dying in the end, and this is looking pretty good for Swift. They're getting all the frags they need to, and now it's only Campy still in. May has backed all the way off, but at least they got the fours out of 404. Yeah, I, I don't know what the holdup was there on Faint, because Sandblast got launched forward, and yeah, they, Campy had to use a lot of his ammo to kill that sentry gun, but then they didn't walk forward at all, or clear the stickies, and they had pretty much the entirety of Swift tied down over on the left side, dealing with Yite's flank play, and uh, they did not pressure the point at all, so... A little bit of a mistake there from Faint, unable to uh, seal the deal, as it were. But the Ubers are still even, so we'll see what happens. It's Faint's turn to play the grind game. Yeah, I suppose so. They're sitting on this middle point. Plenty of time on the board. They gotta get a, uh, some rounds on the board. They can't stalemate for 27 minutes. Not that they would want to. Um, so they're going to be sending some sacks in and they have to play it slow. As you said, Sandblast is getting aggressive somewhat over on this right hand side, but he's got his team to back him up. He's got some heals there. It's going to be Laz who's actually bombing in straight in on a 404. Actually a nice surf and he's going to get the force out anyways. I'm not even sure 404 needed to pop that, but he pops it off anyways. And Laz did his job a great uh, bomb in by him. Yeah, he, he got hit by a rocket like mm -hmm. right after he popped. So he did drop there. But that was a really cool bomb from Laz. I like that. And now we're going to see a preparatory push here because Fifth are, are so soft here. They're just running back. Delpo at least spams a little bit, but that's that. And uh, they're going to rely on their ability to build Faint. Faint had trouble last round picking what door to go through. Now they're going right away, Corn Pop. Will they get Uber in time? Will 404. Oh, he's only at 80%. Garbulio and Slimish both going down extremely early. They're going to get Tiger as well. I don't think it's going to happen. They've lost so many players. High five. No chance at all. Faint Gaming are going to take this on the round, and we're tied at a 2-2 game. Yeah, I like Faint's play there. Very nice. Go in as quickly as possible. Don't hesitate. I The reason you scram is so that when you play in your match, you don't have to think about what you're doing. But uh, maybe Faint's finally starting to get that going for them on Snake Water or Sunshine. Yeah, we're going to be rolling with this next mid fight, and there's already a lot of fighting going on there over on this right hand side. Big bomb in by Laz once again, going to get some damage down, but really not getting any of the frags that he really wants to. It's a three on four at the moment. Faint gaming slightly favored here, but Slum is jumping in. It's just going to end up feeding, and Yite's pushing in on a Tiger. He doesn't really have the health advantage. Tiger doesn't have any teammates. That's going to allow Sandblast to get that last frag. Will 404 make it back to his last alive? That's the question on everybody's mind. Sandblast is chasing him back. 
He wants to get this frag, but the respawners are in. He should be fine. Yeah, Sandblast has not mastered the art of the cross map 80 damage scatter shot. But he's coming back in. A little bit of harassment there, but not uh, not gonna find any medics to shoot. And we'll see now what an well. So the the play there, you might say, well, why did Sandblast just run in? And the reason is they got really distracted with him, and so didn't contest second at all. And now he's gonna come up sniper because we're even Ubers, so it just saves us time overall in the match. Yep, he's going to be coming up against Tiger as the uh, sniper he's going to be up against. It's that 100, and what's even his ping? Oh, it's only 108. That's not too bad. 108 sniper, though, is uh, sometimes annoying to play against. We'll see if he can uh, win the 1v1. It's interesting. I think we've seen all the scouts go sniper at some point in this match, so good to see that they're all capable on the off classes. Yeah, and they have their first little duel exchange there, but nobody dies. Tiger actually getting really banged up by spam. And uh, going to take an arrow and be A-OK. -okay. So, let's see. I typically say the offensive sniper is the one with the advantage because the defensive sniper is usually stationary. And so you never really know where that offensive sniper is going to come from. Oh, it especially we'll helps. see, he's in deep. Yeah, he's going to back off. He missed that shot, so... Not liking it right now. There's plenty of time to go, though. They uh, they don't have to rush it at the moment. They can just try to work the sniper in, and if they lose it, they lose it. If they manage to get the snipe, as long as they don't like lose their medic for any dumb reason. Ooh, that was actually a big snipe, though. Tiger gets a headshot on a sandblast, and high five follows it up with some damage. So that's going to be Tiger winning the sniper 1v1. We'll see if there's any answer from Swift. Do they want to get aggressive? Yeah, I, w I wonder when Faint's going to try to run some of the other off classes, like, say, Heavy. But uh, we're going back to the sniper well again. Uh, they are dead set that that is the way to do this. Yeah, I don't hate that. There's still a lot of time on the board, and Sandblast didn't really lose a fair fight. He kind of walked in, got shot a whole lot, so it's not like he proved himself to be the worst sniper. He's still taking some pot shots, and I think he still is a good player. He can still make some uh, opportunities for himself. It's not like he's on an off day. So we're just going to have to wait a little bit longer, Marxist. Oh, maybe now it's time to maybe now it's time to change. Yeah, that that was great. Go he, oh, no, what? Oh, he was so high up in the air. How does May drop that? Garbulia puts question mark into the chat, and with a hundred percent on four four, the tides could be turning here. We had a, a comedic failure on the part of Sandblast <laughs> because he was just shooting that shutter door. Yeah. In preparation for opening, and then he gets that shot and dead on. But then his med drops Uber too. Blast is gonna go down as well. Yeah, he's trying to fight for everything he's got. He's gonna manage to kill. High five there. Delpo's gonna pick up Sandblast as well, who I can only assume was going for a back cap. Yep. And uh, they are now three down. Two down now for this mid fight. Strangely enough, Swift chooses to take the longer route. Which puts them more in order with the other team here. Whoa, big shot on 2404, but 404 is going to end up all right. But one thing I want to point out there did you know where Tambo shot 404? Where did he shoot 404? He shot 404 in the head. Oh. So that gave him the best chance to kill 404, but he just he couldn't left click fast enough. Shame. Uh, here comes Garbuglio, though, and nice pipe from Campy. Shutting down that bombing soldier. Yite in. Nope, not quite in the valley. Looked like he wanted to get aggressive, but he smartly backs off. So, still gonna be. They're, they're sitting on second. At least they didn't get rolled back to last. We've seen Swift do this a couple times where they could have held on to second, but they just get scared and sit on last. Bank Gaming aren't gonna go for that same route, which is nice. They're still confident enough to sit on the second point. It's a tie game at the moment. There's still a lot to play for, so uh, it's good to see them not getting too scared. <laughs> Indeed. And I, I'm enjoying their constant calls from 404 that so-and-so is a spy. <laughs> uh, we'll see what's going on now, though. They, this team has shown us they're, they're ready to grind it. But they did do something really wacky last time and just go for it. They're going to go for the Ooh. distraction play. Garbuglio goes in for the big bomb, kills himself. Campy is at 9 health. He's finally going to get taken out by Tiger. Slumnish is going to get last as well. 
That's a big play there, Corn Pop. I think the plan worked to perfection. Yeah, the demo pick's really big and a soldier on top is just beautiful. Yite's getting caught out on the flank. He's staying alive for a little bit too long, but finally does go down. And we see a lot of players are in all over the place. 4-4 is still pushing in. May has to pop that Uber charge off onto Tambo. 4-4 serves that out and isn't even gonna have to pop in the end. So this is looking really promising for Swift. If they can get in on this last point, they're gonna get the second one for sure. Now they have 100% Uber charge push into last is exactly what they wanted, Mark. So they're gonna be going as fast as they can. Up against a Laz Engineer and a Yite Sniper, but uh, they have this Uber Charge. It's gonna be the Chariot onto two scouts and Tambo or the Devil Man not too far behind. They're gonna get some time on a point early, but they mostly have Uber Charge players onto it. Now we see Fan Gaming are kind of coming out. The tail end of this Uber Charge is gonna end up failing. Here goes Sandblast and Campy both gonna go down. Now they're getting the frag as they need to. They have this higher ground. Some good stickies coming out of Delpo. Gonna get another frag, but it's only May and Laz, and I'm not sure they're gonna be enough. May not enough to take down two players. And once again, Swift are gonna take the lead in this match. Yep, three to two. Kind of an interesting play there. It almost fell apart for Smith, but they, yeah. they managed to pull it back together at the end. So we'll see what Fink can bring out here. Their mids so far have been great. They've just really had trouble dealing with stalemates. Oh, Campy takes damage early, Corn Club. Yeah, that's the uh, consequence of him getting here a little bit later than Delpo. Some good demo play by him. Now, though, it seems they have healed back up. Fink Gamer are kind of clumped up, and they got to look out and be a little worried about that. They're kind of ringing around the Rosie once again. Fink, or Laz is kind of getting aggressive, but nobody's committed. Nobody down just yet. Sandblast ate a lot of damage, but he's trying to eat an arrow from his medic. Still, it looks like Fink are getting aggressive. They're pushing all the Swift back. Will this hurt them in the ass, though? That's the question. They're going to lose Tambo, and that's not ideal. Campy and Yite both going to go down. Everybody's all over the place. Tigers hit three shots already. Finally gets taken down by Sandblast, who's hit two now. Onto a couple of players. The Uber Charge was popped off of May. Sandblast trying to get it out of 4 if he can, but he's beefing all of these shots and Slimnish takes him down. This medic May, he's dying. Uh yeah, that's uh that's not a good mid there. <laughs> so Swift mm -mm. is going to have a really solid hold here on two. Yite might try something. We'll see. No. It's just mm -hmm. it's a it's just a I let I'm letting you know I'm there. I haven't given up yet. But, uh, so this will be a solid cap, and Swift will have the chance at a quick push coming up, Corn Pop, and we'll see which way they choose to go. They're going to be pushing into a Sandblast NG and a Yite Sniper. Yeah, it's, they're not going to get a much better push than this. It's 100% Uber Charge versus, well, 30. The longer they wait, the smaller it gets, but it's still quite large. Tambo jumps straight into them really early, and uh, he's almost dies for that, but he gets back in the spawn. They get this gun, which is uh, good for them. Finally, now Laz does go down. They lose Tiger for it. High five jumping all around the place, but they're losing quite a few players on the faint side. They've got a lot of damage down, but they can't pull up from the frags. Can Tambo and May take down all the players? They can't even get to the point, so it doesn't matter. Yep, and that all... Put us at the old four to two. I do believe. And so, well, go ahead, Corn Pop. Sorry. Well, I was just gonna say, Marxist. We didn't talk about it, but you have a rule that if it goes to time in the first half, the second half will be a roll, and that's kind of been what it's uh, what it has been so far. I mean, Bank Gaming, they've just been slipping. They haven't gotten their foothold in the second half. It's been almost 15 minutes already, but. The pace of this is much quicker, and Slamnish and Garbuglio down very early. They didn't die, Garbuglio did. There goes Lazo, trading out as a 5v5 at the moment. Yikes, the only player really still in on Faint Gaming, though. The rest of them are back in Valley, and they're gonna have to push back into this middle point if they wanna continue fighting. Yite is losing a 1v1 against Tiger. Loses it there in the end, and now it's a 3v4 on this middle point, and Swift have maybe overstayed their welcome. Tambo bombs that demo man, and 4-4 is gonna be getting out with Tiger, although they're a little disconnected. They should be fine, though, in second. Yeah, Faint actually did. Oh no! The soldier sad zone for Tambo. <laughs> unable to deal with a scout uh, due to lack of shotgun. And so here we are. I'm, I'm actually surprised there. Faint did something that I despise on mid, which is they ran really far back for a player behind them mm -hmm. and seeded a ton of positioning to Swift. But then Swift responded to having positional advantage by spreading out, and that's uh. That's not what you want to do. But when you're winning, you just want to to put yourself in a, a better position to win instead of saying we're winning, I'm just going to go run around. 
Tamo's up on Spy, and literally, like, the moment he walked out of spawn, I had my camera near 404, and I heard him yell that Spy command, so I don't know if he expects it or if it's just a meme, but 404's checking his back. They shouldn't know at all that Tambo's up on Spy, but it seems like they expect it, and uh, I'm not sure Tambo's going to have a good time trying to get in on this one. Yeah, I'm just assuming it's a voice bind for spam purposes. Yeah. Maybe he uses that as his Uber bind, like his mask bind, or uh, as his, his uh, I've Ubered mask. And he so he just spams it throughout to desensitize you to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, Tambo's spy play, let's be honest, Corn Pop, you nor I had very great faith in it from the beginning. <laughs> no. So we just didn't discuss it to spare the poor man the embarrassment. <laughs> well, I mean, we haven't really seen any successful spy plays at all. We've seen quite a few in this game, but none of them have worked so far. These teams seem to be very spy aware, which is, you know, good to see at the highest level. But sometimes players mix, uh, mess up and a spy play can be successful. Or even if it's just like a really sneaky play, uh, the best a player will drop to a spy at some point in their career. But looks like we've got a pause, Marxist, and things are going to slow down for a little bit here. Yeah, I'll talk. Here's my PSA. You mentioned my rule. I didn't want to bring up two Marxist rules in the same match. <laughs> but here's a PSA. If you're a player who likes to play Spy, I know they exist. All right. I know you're out there, Romer player that goes Spy every chance he gets. So what you want to do, the times that you're most likely to get the Spy play are obviously not in stalemates when your opponent expects to have the Spy it's in transition fights when you're at uber advantage. You just stab the medic again. Yeah, or now... uber disadvantage is when they do not expect to have the spy, and so they won't look for you. Got a big bomb coming in from high five, looking to force out main. He's got that high ground, does end up forcing it off. 404 had to pop as well, though. Tambo got taken down by Tiger. Double uses the supercharge as a chance to get in. High five taken down by Sandblast, though, so not great by them, but they're losing a lot of players. It's only Sandblast and May still in this cafe. They're gonna get joined up by a respawning Yite, but can they get their medic out alive? They're gonna get the Bragg and the Slumish, and that should halt the aggression on a Swift which is ideal because they only have three players alive and they could even take this onto the back foot. Yite is coming in. They're getting a lot of damage down. 4-4, four, four, the last player is still here on this middle point. He's going to go down. Some great aggression from Laz. <laughs> yeah, very well played. Swift really wanted to hold on to that for some reason and, and they paid for it. And now May is going to end up with 60% uber advantage and it puts Faint right in position to bring this back to a uh, one round differential. They have 80% advantage, so quite large on the side of Faint Gaming. Um, it is 4-2, to two. that's the score line. Yes. And uh, they're looking to make that 4-3, to three. they need one more after that. 13 minutes still on that clock, so quite a bit of time to work with. They're going to pop in onto Sandblast on this right-hand side. They want to get the heavy down very early, they do get that one, so he's not going to be too big of a threat. High five, bombing up over the point. He wants to cause some distraction in the back lines. Meanwhile, on the left-hand side, the scouts are wreaking havoc on the side of Swift. Sandblast is about to lose a 1v1 to Slumish, but he eats an arrow, actually, and Slumish gets a little distracted. Thank game, they are going to get another frag onto uh, Tiger, and with high five down as well, Slumish, he just needs to kill two players. One of them Stambo, one of them May. Is he actually going to be able to do this? Slumish, oh, he just loses at the very end. Ends up trading with that soldier, and May caps it off. Gets the final loop. star on a Garbo Glow just for fun. Yeah, well played to May to just stand on that point. Uh, Laz says, I was lagging. We have 12 minutes left. Match point. In favor of Spiff, Faint needs to get two rounds here to win the game, or just one to tie it and take us potentially to overtime. Yeah, we could see a 4-4 scoreline, which would uh, be the maximum hype you can get in an ESEA match. Tambo going in through the enemy team's cafe, meeting Garbuglu though, and he's going to lose that 1v1 of the first casualty of this mid-fight. Sandblast running around Tiger isn't going to be able to exchange any frags, but with Laz going down, Faint Gaming know they have to back off. Can't be going down. It's a really big deal, though, because without a demo man, they're definitely not going to be able to hold on the second point, and they're going to have to run all the way back to last. Yeah, you can tell Faint, too, is very conscious of the situation. Because as soon as they lost that second player, they just said, and we're done. Because uh, you don't want to lose the game over trying to hold on to it. Whereas they've shown kind of a penchant to be okay with extra aggression at mid. But uh, they're going to go for the last hold. Sandblast is going to be your off-classer. Swift, as of yet, has not had the chance to do so. Even Ubers, though, so... We'll see. I'll, now, all night long, Swift has had trouble with this. 
Yeah, they have, uh, tech, well, historically they've had a trouble pushing in a loss, but eventually they get it. Bank Gaming can't let them eventually get it because if they do, it's over. It doesn't matter how much time they stall. If it gets to five points, the game is done and uh, they get a loss on that scoreboard. So that's not ideal. They're going to send Yite in behind and actually straight and gets juggled up on a 404. That would have been a crazy play, but he didn't quite have enough HP. Tambo hits him with a pipe and that's going to be out of his dreams for the frag video. So they're now a player down, but I like the fact that they're getting aggressive. Swift are in the position to uh, push in 65, send in a sack. It's going to be Tiger, but Sandblast is able to deny that scout frag in and looks like they're gonna be able to stuff the rest of the swift aggression yeah i don't know i would have gone ahead and tried the uber there yeah. because uh you don't have a big class uh, like an ng or a heavy to contest you oh no another nice bomb but he shoots him in the feet Ooh. and uh shoots him straight up in the air almost could have got it because uh, he, you could t 404 was like oh no because <laughs> he was just waggling his mouth but uh, it didn't happen. Slumnish is going to die in a sticky trap and attempt at a counter sack. So, uh, you know, just buffing damage stats over here for Campy. And now Faint are kind of moving out on this lower left side. They pop the Uber charge off and they find a lot of unubered players. There is a sniper here who they kind of caught off guard, but taking a long time to kill Tiger. Sandblast have to chase pretty far. Now 4-4 has popped his Uber charge off and uh, they're pushing the rest of Faint back up into this last area. Yite's going to get caught out by high five and Campy as well isn't looking too healthy here. He's trying to avoid some stickies. He's going to be okay. Sandblast still in the back line though is who they have to look out for. He's the one who can really cause some troubles for them, but he's being chased by two scouts. I think Tiger should get the frag here in the 1v1 all the way in the back lines. Looks like Tiger's gonna lose it in the end to Sandblast. Meanwhile, over on last, there's a lot of fighting still going down. There's some players on last, and I don't think it matters what Sandblast is doing because Yite's the only player on last, and he can't defend it. It's a 5-3 game, Marxist. Yeah, the, uh, so Campy, and I'll explain what happened in case our camera didn't catch it. Campy, May, and a soldier, I didn't catch whether it was Laz or Tambo, were kind of chilling watching the shutter door and then they got bombed by a soldier and he killed campy and may and then that was the end of the game yeah it's uh i don't know i felt like it was really doable for fan gaming they had a lot of good moments but in the end um there's just more experience on the side of uh what's their name swift there we go swift more experience and i think they had better dm as well um, as I saw throughout that match, but we can look at some stats here, Marxist. Oh, yeah, dude. So, Sandblast ends up losing top fragging honors to Tiger the Euro, uh, who ends up getting 43 frags. Slemnish, though, no slouch at 30. Uh, and then Sandblast does get 41, so he's only too short. You can't really hold that against the man, but uh, his damage was still higher than tiger so his his <laughs> kills got stolen but slimnish though that poor man with 24 assists <laughs> that's a lot of stolen frags corn pop it is feel bad for slimnish but i mean i gotta say with 100 ping that's a great scoreline for tiger 43 kills 28 deaths 220 dpm 220 is not the biggest number in the server but i mean it's respectable it's decent you know and paired with 43 frags that's uh that's a great stat line to have if you're uh playing on that ping yep and it, like you know people know i played medic so let's see four four out frag may by one <laughs> okay let's, let's look at the damage Relevant. Oh, May did the 0.5 dam you know, the 5 points damage more per minute. Oh, wow. But, uh, yeah, uh, more Ubers because Faint Gaming typically was, no <laughs> was not just sitting on the defensive for as long, but two Uber drops out of May. Unfortunate. Yeah. The, the deaths, though, pretty surprisingly, 404 at 11 and May at 12, both hitting kind of the the average, the, the cross line between good and bad game. Well, it was kind of a long one, to be very fair to them. I mean, wh how long was it? 55 minutes? I don't know if that counts uh, halftime at all, but I think it does. But um, still, that was a, first half went to time, second half went, I think, 20 minutes-ish. So, yeah, that's almost the full time limit. Um, so you kind of expect those death numbers to be higher, and the frag numbers as well. Um, but 22 Uber Charge drops, I think, is probably the 
biggest medic stat, like at least in uh, the difference between the two medics, two to zero is bigger than any of the other gaps. I know 15 mm -hmm. damage compared to 10, that's pretty big too, but um, the Ubercharge drops. I think one was a sniper and one was a really high bomb in. Player got juggled and they managed to, uh, I think, sink some rockets. So, yeah. Unfortunate. The second drop I don't hold against me, but that's 30% yeah. more yeah. damage. Or 33. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so let's see what else. What other tales of the tape are in here? Laz kind of having a, a rough game on the damage perspective for a Soldato class, but that can happen on Sunshine. It's a weird map for soldier because there's so many elevation changes and some folks just uh you don't have a good time with it so we'll see what they what they can do on the next map but i certainly don't feel bad for faint gaming i really liked some of their mids for uh for this map yeah these are two teams that you know are going to be fighting for that kind of third and fourth spot uh, depending on how good velocity is this season, they might get fifth. It's kind of they're kind of in that mid range where they're not a hundred percent they're sure in their playoffs like Ascent and Froyo are. I mean, spoiler, but yeah. Uh, but they're definitely they definitely got a really solid chance. And I know Faint Gaming they got a taste of it last season. Arguable if they deserved it or not over uh, velocity, but that's how the numbers ended up playing out for them. Swift are a new team, but they got a lot of invite experience on them, so I know they're going to be going for that playoffs. Third place probably is their goal. Um, so it's, yeah, it's good to see these two uh, high-level teams for our first match in the season. Uh, it was a really entertaining one to boot. Yeah, I had fun. That was a nice sunshine. We got to see some unique stuff, and we got to see a lot of early season kinks. I think it's pretty telling that mm -hmm. Swift and Faint both had so much trouble pushing last. And, and you know, to be fair, if you're, if you're a newer viewer, Sunshine is not particularly a map that's known for having a difficult to push last. I mean, it's not... It's not the easiest thing you've ever done, but it's not in any way regarded as a map that's just impossible. Yeah, I'm looking at these two teams' future for this week. Faint Gaming Sunshine Week should get a little sunnier as they're taking on AnimeList.net, which, uh, just from the name, I can tell is a great team. Um, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's mostly uh, players who haven't played an invite before. Um, oh, that, they're, well, they got goldfish. They're a little, they, I think. Okay, do they? All right. Yeah, okay. It's not here's, the worst team ever, but I don't roster. think they'll win. No one is paid up except for whoever <laughs> Kamo is. I think that's like, it's definitely like not, it's Safrix, that's who it all right, is. All right, all right, all right, all right. It says their roster on the thing. Happy Cool, Kev, Trippa, Goldfish, Kamo is a demo, and a AZN is the med. So, not the worst roster in Invite, probably, but uh, Fang Gaming should be taking that one over them. Um, but more importantly, more interestingly, in my eyes at least, uh, Swift NA are taking on Ascent in their next match on uh, on Sunshine. And that one could be really interesting, because I think Ascent I mean, is their probably second place team. That's where most people would pin them. Yeah, they've got a shopper first. Maybe they could fall into third. I think this match could be really telling because if Swift can take some some rounds off them, if they could maybe win it, uh, that'd be really telling as uh, that could mean we're in for a close season. And will we see a full time NG? But uh, <laughs> they uh, so that I think that would tell me on a subconscious level what what we can expect to see. I don't think we'll see it uh, when the match does no. happen. But I should note. Uh, because I I said I couldn't do it. We do have a cast tomorrow as well. Yes, we should have that one. I don't think it's on the page yet, but it should be going up. That one should be the... Which game even is that, Marxist? I think... I think... I think it is Ascent versus... Wait, no, Ascent versus Swift. Oh, that one just got rescheduled, actually. So I don't think we have a, I don't think we have a cast tomorrow. I think oh, this wow. one got rescheduled, like, just tonight. The game we were gonna cast tomorrow. Sorry. Well, we're liars. Let's let's go see schedules and results. It it was the Ascent versus Swift game, but now it has been rescheduled to Thursday. So I think that's being played Thursday and not Tuesday. But we will have casts on Thursday. I don't know if it'll be that game or a different game, but we will have a game on Thursday, hundred percent. I guarantee it. Um, Thursday, eleven p.m. Eastern. Come out, come out for that. It'll be a good time. I don't know who's there, but there'll be people there. Uh, unless you have anything else to say, Mark, because I think we can wrap it up at the first cast of the season. Nope, I feel happy with the, the way season 26 is going so far. It's been a good start, and uh, with Swift being crowned the 
first undefeated team in ESCA invite season 26. We're going to close this one out. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name's been Corn Pop. I've been joined, of course, by Marks, who's chatting with me all night. And nice, he'll be unappreciated cameraman. Give him some love because uh, he doesn't get seen as much as me and Marks. He doesn't get heard as much. So shout out to him for uh, running the stream. And as I said, we'll be back on Thursday. This has been ESCA season 26 on Team Fortress TV. I'll see you later.